Are you part of a mastermind? And if not, what might you be missing out on in terms of personal and professional growth? In this episode, Justin Benton shares with us his odyssey from encountering Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich to finding a cure for his son's autism, leading him to a huge mission of reaching a billion people by 2025 and becoming a key player in Russell Brunson's mastermind. You won't want to miss this. Would you like to think and grow rich? If so, keep on listening. This podcast is dedicated to those who have found their way from fear to freedom and for those who are considering undertaking this amazing journey. This is the Courage to Be podcast and I am your host, Tanya Vasayo. Before we get into this episode, I'm thrilled to share that I'm hosting a series on how people's lives have been influenced by the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you'd like to learn and apply how to think and grow rich, Go to the show notes to get some wonderful free resources and join the Courage to Be community. I look forward to being your guide and mentor so you can transform your life. Welcome back to the Courage to Be, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And we are continuing with this series on Think and Grow Rich, the book from Napoleon Hill. And today I'm excited because we have Justin Benton with us. Welcome, Justin. Hey, we finally made it here. I know I tried before and you've got all those questions, but we got reconnected by our mutual friend, Adora. So I'm so happy to be here and talk all things think and grow rich. I love it. I love it. So what's been your journey? Like, how did you first encounter think and grow rich? Was it at a younger age? Was it? in these last couple of years, tell me your story with Think and Grow Rich. Well, you know, I like when I got out of, I got my first real job when I graduated from college in 1999 and they put us through a three-day seminar completely paid for. And it was actually Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And that was the first time I was about 21, 22. And that was the first time I had ever read anything like that. I was like, whoa, we could take control of our mindset. And so it really started my journey. And of course, Dale Carnegie, And then down and Napoleon Hill with Think and Grow Rich. I just consumed everything I possibly could. And so I don't know if if you've been like this, but like in my life, there's been real big growth, read, consume, and then apply, 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 success, failure, success, failure. And then I'll be in another place where I'm growth. And then so when the whole thing happened in March 2020 and everything changed and shifted and we started talking on Zoom like this right now, that was another growth period for me because I knew uh, I had uh, brick and mortar businesses out here on the West Coast. I knew the world was going to shift to online. I mean, we all knew it before. We knew Amazon was really taking control, but it, it all changed. I mean, they said the average American, 17% of the average Americans before March of 2020 shopped first online. They were already getting their groceries delivered. They were already using Uber Eats. That quadrupled when that came down with the, those three years that we all went through. So I needed to find a mentor who was going to help me. I was like, all right, I am not, I, the world has shifted. Who is the one that's the greatest at teaching people how to get their movements out online? Well, for me, it was a no brainer. Fortunately, I had been in the circles and it was Russell Brunson. And so I, I had joined his mastermind, it's called the Inner Circle. And being in his community a couple of years ago, he started going crazy on Napoleon Hill. Well, for those that might have not have heard, well, Russell, like he went so crazy that the original, it's the original, original book is called Laws of Success in 1925 by Napoleon Hill. And he only printed out a hundred of them. And he's sending out these hundred copies of Laws of Success, 1925, like hand punched, put together, sent them to kings and queens and royalty and presidents and industrialists. And like, he sent them out to these people and said, what do you think? Like, this is all I got. My 20 years of everything I've taught everybody, everything and interviewed everybody from Andrew Carnegie said, what do you think? And so Russell found a copy that was signed by Napoleon Hill of the original 100. And it was listed for one and a half million dollars. And Russell said, man, wouldn't that be cool? And so he had already taken a couple dives on some other Napoleon Hills. That's his favorite. And so I'm following along with him. I'm like, well, I knew Think and Grow Rich, but I didn't know about all these other books. And so I'm reading it. And then all of a sudden, Russell, I I, I knew he was a big fan. And so uh, I had heard that Don Green, the president of the Napoleon Hill Foundation, was having a Napoleon Hill uh, auction in Hollywood Hills, where I live out here in L.A. And I was I, I put it out there in our Facebook group for the mastermind. I said, hey, does anybody want to go to Napoleon Hill? Don Green's going to be there. They're auctioning off like 
artifacts that no one's ever seen before. And I really thought some of my friends and the inner circle mastermind were going to join me. But then five minutes later, I get a, a it's a Vokter is, is the app that Russell uses. And he goes, what's the deets? And so he had just got a boat, taking his family out. He couldn't go. He said, Justin, if you could go on my behalf and let me know what they have, oh, I would be forever in your debt. So I was more than happy to go down there. And I, that's where I met Don Green. And that's when my journey really, really started to take off. We bought all these incredible like signed checks and first edition PMA with uh, Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone signed. I think we paid $15,000 for that book. And, and so anyways, and that, that was when I was just like really starting to get to understand. And then one thing led to another and I helped broker the deal with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and Russell. And then we launched Secrets of Success, which has, you know, all of these unpublished manuscripts from Napoleon Hill. So I've become a de facto Napoleon Hill expert in this wild journey. And it's just crazy how life takes us, right? When COVID hit and we're all like, what are we going to do? How's life? Pivot, all these kinds of things. I became this Indiana Jones, you know, personal artifact collector. And thanks to people like Don Green, I have learned so much about Napoleon Hill and his life. And we're doing some really, really, really cool projects in the future, publishing unpublished manuscripts. And they're going to be releasing something that you're watching right now, how you're watching and consuming. We're going to be doing something very similar to that coming up really soon, too, which is going to be really exciting. So that's my journey with Napoleon Hill on Thinking Grow Rich. It's fascinating, Justin, because there's so many pieces to unpack from that. You know, you just summarized it into four minutes, but I have so many questions from it. So here you are coming out of college. They pay for the seminar. You start getting into self-development and you read it back then. And you haven't read the book until now again. You don't start getting in, into Napoleon Hill into this time period. Had you like going back now that you're understanding more of Napoleon Hill, I'm guessing you've read more of the book, like the read the book several more times. Have you connected the dots? Like Steve Jobs always says, you can't connect the dots moving forward. You can only connect them moving backwards. Like, were there some of the principles that you had already applied that when COVID hit and you're like, no online person, you know, I'm following Russell, da, da, da. Like what principles had you already been um, applying unconsciously or being that unconscious competent, like Bob Proctor used to say, what worked for you? Well, again, for me, it was a brand new opening when I was And the crazy thing about that three day seminar was that before you started day one at your job, they had every new employee go through this seminar. And even the employer said, look, we know some of you are going to go through this three day workshop and you're going to quit. Because you're going to realize that this isn't your voice. This isn't your calling. And it was just a real blessing for me to get exposed to that at, at such a young age. And yes, I just started consuming books. And, and I think the big difference that so many of us who really understand Think and Rich and really understand Napoleon Hill and the principles that it really worked for you wasn't just to read it one time. You know, I'm a high achiever. So for me, it's like, ooh, check that box, read that book. And for me, I wasn't much of a reader. And I back then, but guess what happened about what, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, they started having audiobooks. And so, I mean, and remember, like YouTube's only been around since 2004. No one had even heard of it before then. So you literally had to read books. And someone like myself who was not a reader, I was not consuming the amount of information and I wasn't able to have the repetition that I do now. With audiobooks, I literally, I mean, if you look at my timelines, I have between eight to 10 hours of audiobooks every single day. And it's not that I listen to a book once and you can speed it up to two, you know, two X or 1.5 X. I listen to if, if I find a real book that, that has meaning, I'll listen to it a minimum of 10 times because look, it's like net time. Like Tony Robbins says, right? If you're already going to be doing something, if you've got it in your ear, you can listen to it. Like we used to back in the old days with the cassette tapes and things like that. So anyways, I was just, you know, uh, looking back to seeing how I connected the dots or they say hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, I, I think a lot of what we talk about with Secrets of Success, it's really fun to look back even further from those 1850s and Samuel Smiles and Orson Sweat Martin and Charles Hannell and Elsie Lincoln Benedict and the contemporaries of Napoleon Hill and to see how they were on the cusp of this new thought movement and learn it directly from them. So, yeah, there are some certain things that I think kind of overlap. One of them that, uh, that I love the most probably about Napoleon Hill is, you know, he's, he's always talking about things of having that definite purpose. And for me, 
Like if someone were to ask me, how did you make it? Or what advice would you give someone who's starting over or something like that? We all kind of get that question. And my answer in my words is how big is your why? And that's the same thing. What is your definite purpose? And like Bruce Lee had written it down and had it, you know, I was going to make $10 million by the 1970s and be the most famous martial arts, you know, actor and all these kinds of things. What is your definite purpose? And, and I think that if you haven't written it down, I always like to say like, you know, writing it down is like spelling, right? The pen is your wand. Then you'll never know where you're going to go. You have to write it down. You have to have your definite purpose. And the reason why I say you have to have a big why is that for those of you that are on an entrepreneurial journey or you're self-employed or you have a side hustle or you have a passion project, is that there's going to be hard days. There's going to be really hard days. It's going to be great days too. But there's going to be tough days where you don't want to get out of bed or you don't want to do the thing or you don't want to make another call or whatever it is. You don't want to get out of bed or you don't or you have self-doubts. But then if your why is big enough, I mean, if you have a why that is like I am on a mission, I have a mission and you understand how powerful that is, that is what will get you through. Because you can have anything you want in life because you just have to put the time in and it might take, you know, I think Tony also says a good one is like many people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10. And so again, time's going to pass anyways. If you have a big enough why and you don't give up, you're going to get there, but you got to know what you want and you got to have a big enough why. I love this. And I want to go back to something that was really important that you said about the difference between consuming, because I identify with you. I, I think some of those of us that are the overachievers, it's like, check, I read the book, check, I did this. Like you, you just go through the list. And I used to pride myself and wear that as a badge of honor. Like I read 50 books this year, one per week, you know, and it wasn't until I learned there's a difference between consuming and applying and understanding. Talk to me about that difference and how that changed for you listening to the audios, because that's how you could consume better than reading and the constant repetition of things. Because even like with movies, I might watch an inspiring movie or documentary. And then it's like, oh, I already watched that five years ago. And now I'm coming back to it. And like, no, watch it and listen and apply it. And what are you learning? The same as what we do. We do that at the Napoleon Hill Institute. We do a daily study of this material and community. But how has that worked for you? And when was that shift, Justin, that you're like, okay, enough of just consuming, but let's start learning and applying applied knowledge. Well, again, I think it comes down to, it's just looking at books in a different light. I mean, we look at a book, like you said, traditionally, and we have to give ourselves credit because look, 80% of the people who buy the book never read it. Only like an extra 10% actually read the first chapter. So in order to actually have been someone who bought a book and read a book, like congratulations, you're in the 99th percentile. But I think that people didn't, we do, I didn't know that you could read a book and, and have it be more of a playbook, have it be more something that you can study. Like there is a book that a lot of people are familiar with and study the Bible, right? So that's the most sold book of all time. And that's how you have to look at a book like Think and Grow Rich. It isn't something you're going to just read through one time. You're going to, and as we all know, we've all changed so much, which like, I know a lot of people will read Think and Grow Rich once a year. It's like an annual thing. And our lives change, our perspectives change, our experiences change. We hear things that we needed to hear then, but then we read it again and we hear things that we need to hear now. So to intellectually understand something, that is certainly one concept, but to put it into practice and see how it works for you to get that feedback and, and to see it in process is, is a whole nother level. So if you bought the book, you read the first chapter, you read the entire book, now you're reading it on a constant basis or you know semi-constant basis and you're applying it, there you go. That's why you're listening to a podcast this, you know, like yours and, and you're seeing the benefits of it. Because it always works. These secrets of success, if you apply, it will absolutely work. But you've got to put in the work and you've got to you know, continue to read it. And I love that you're saying that you're doing it with a community. I think it's so important to have people that are like-minded and also like valued. And look, like, you know, not to get woo-woo, but it is what it is. Like there's vibrational levels. And we can immediately feel when someone walks into a room, whether they bring lift the energy up or they take the energy down or a relationship that you have with someone, they either 
bring energy to you. They lift you up. They're supportive. They're positive. They're encouraging. Or they take the energy and they consume the energy or they're, you know, doom and gloom or they victim mentality or all those kinds of things. And again, I, I forget if it, I don't know who said this. I, I was talking on a, another show yesterday about this, but I'll have to track it down. And I've heard it a lot of times over. And Don Green over at the Napoleon Hill Foundation talks about this one too. And it says, the only way that you change from year to year are the books that you read and the people that you meet. And mm -hmm. so when you surround yourself with people that whether it's books or whether it's podcasts or whether it's people or communities, it makes such an incredible impact. And yeah, Think and Grow Rich is, and I, I heard another good one too. There's like, they changed the titles a couple of times. It's kind of a funny story about how that all happened. But, but like, if you break the words down, like think and grow and then rich and the rich isn't necessarily all about monetary success. You know, he kind of went back and forth on that. But this book really is the breakdown of the 1925 laws of success for entrepreneurs to figure out a way that they can take care of themselves. I mean, obviously, this was coming out of 1937 out of the Depression. And so people were really concerned about their financial situation. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's fabulous. We're going to take a little pause right here because I want to come back to definiteness of purpose that you were talking about. So let's take a little break. How many times have you looked around at the people you love and realized I'm different? You think differently. You feel like your view of the world is different from the rest. You have a constant and consistent appetite for more. You want more success, more fulfillment, more energy, more mental strength, more deep relationships, more happiness. If you feel a longing for any of these things, then I'd love to have you to be part of the Secrets of Success Mastermind community. And don't feel like you have to commit to anything right now. I'm not asking for any type of contracts or anything like that. All you have to do is say, maybe, and test drive the Secrets for Success for free for 30 days and see for yourself. Just click on the link on the show notes because when you do this, your life might take a big turning point. Let's come back to definiteness of purpose. Like you were saying, the big why, Justin, you were talking about the importance of having a big why, of having that definiteness of purpose like Bruce Lee did. So for those of you, if you're listening and you've never really seen the definiteness of purpose of Bruce Lee, just Google it and you'll see that he typed it out in the in the seventies and he achieved it because he was clear with that why. And in chapter two, you can learn how to go through this process of definiteness of purpose. But I'm curious, Justin, you read about this, you knew about definiteness of purpose. Did you write down your goals, like even before COVID, because it seems like your trajectory to success, like you compress time and it all just like, boom, it, it came together. It just like, it took off in speed. But I'm wondering, did you have a set goal and did those goals and definiteness of purpose switch throughout time? And then in 2020, it changed because of the pandemic what was your definiteness of purpose or your big why? Can you share a little bit with us? Oh, absolutely. Well, before COVID, and it's still, I still have the same. I have made a little bit of a modification because of COVID. But for me, it's reach a billion people by 2025. Now, my story is I found uh, an incredible uh, plant that helped restore my son's uh, health. He had a severe autism diagnosis. And so I was looking for an answer to restore his health. He was a healthy kid, and then he wasn't. And so then we found it was juicing hemp. It was what we found that worked for him, along with a very clean diet, getting rid of the, all the, you know, the nasty stuff that we have in American diets, like the dairy and the gluten and all that processed foods and refined sugars. So we had a clean diet and raw hemp. And so anyways, when my prayers were answered, I made a covenant and, with God and said, look, I'll pay it forward and let me help reach a billion people by 2025. And how we thought we were going to do that before COVID was we were just going to franchise a bunch of stores in the country and around the world. And we'd reach a billion people the old fashioned way. Uh, but, you know, when COVID hit, it all changed. And so, like I said, I needed to figure out how was I going to reach a billion people? Well, I knew I had to be on shows like this. I knew I had to be on YouTube. I knew I had to align with influencers and celebrities and people that had already accumulated the audiences out there and just share it with their audience. And so that was it. And then I knew, like I said, for all of us, we have to find once we decide what we want in life, what is our definite of a purpose? 
who is the person that's already achieved it and who is the person that's already taught many others how to achieve it themselves. And for me, it was, again, no brainer, Russell Brunson, online sales and marketing. No, there's not a second. There's nobody even close who's already done it and, and helped over 2000 multimillionaires just by following his fundamentals of what he's done. And so, like I said, how it changed was during the relationship learning from Russell, I decided that I wanted to partner with him. I was like, man, how cool would it be to partner with Russell Brunson? You know, because I knew he was the one that was going to guide us through this new world that we find ourselves in. And then that's when Napoleon Hill came up and that's when the opportunity. And I just served. I didn't expect anything in return. I did what he did when he became partners with Tony Robbins. And then lo and behold, earlier this year, he reached out and we had a conversation and he's like, we should partner up on this thing called Secrets of Success. So the missions are still there. I mean, with the Miracle Plant, we're still on track to reach a billion people by 2025. It'll probably be with like a Mr. Beast YouTube video, because again, like you said, you know, trajectory and, and make it happen. But then again, you know, partnering with Russell and Secrets of Success and teaching people how to take control of their mindset on a grand scale. We're looking to get to 100,000 members in the first 24 months. And the really cool thing that you know, too, is like, when did you first find out about this and your story, right? It's either you heard it from your parents who were enlightened, or you heard it from a teacher, or you heard it from somewhere at work or a friend, right? And so if you're, it, no one is, it, this isn't in school, not any school that I ever went to. And so when we change people's mindsets, like you have before as a coach, and as I have, when you introduce a book or a philosophy or a framework, and they actually changes the way they think. And it helps them look for the abundance instead of living in fear and scarcity. Look for what's right instead of what's wrong. And you give them concrete, you know, write it down, read this book, join this community. Now, not only are you changing your mindset, but you're changing your children's mindset. Now you can be the one that teaches them. My kids are hearing this when they're six years old, three years old. I have a three-year-old and all the way up, but I, I had to wait till 22. And I'm gracious and grateful that I found it at 22 because I took a job, but the real beauty of this and how the why and definite purpose of change is, you know, I have my mission to heal the world and I have my mission to enlighten the world. And they both kind of intertwine, believe it or not. That is amazing. I love your story. And thank you for sharing that, Justin. So how many kids do you have? You said three, three-year-old yeah. and what other ages do you three. have? We got uh, Grace at three, Faith at seven, Shay's 11, and Zoe's 14. Wow. You are, that, that is Awesome. I see them. That is so great. Fascinating that your big why came through your kid, you know, and wanting to help him because what came to mind as you were saying that story was the quote from Napoleon Hill in his book of every seed of adversity, you know, angst or failure has an equal or greater seed of a benefit with it. And so who would have told you that I'm sure you guys had really dark moments when this diagnosis was going on, when you were trying to figure it out, that all of this was going to come back it, in such an incredible gift and not just for your son, but for the impact that you're leaving in the world and the legacy that you're leaving behind. I mean, bravo. I, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking it. I mean, it's really amazing your example of definiteness of purpose and just realigning with it. I'm so moved with that story because it's such an example. I'm guessing you started this miracle plant that you were talking about it, selling it. Did you create a brick and mortar or did you just bring it to different locations? Can you tell us a little bit about that journey and how it shifted? Because I also want to pick your brain and have you talk about who Russell Brunson is, because a lot of people might be listening to the podcast that don't even know who Russell is, but how you were able to be guided by intuition, doing your research and be taken to the right place at the right time and the right opportunities. But how did it start with the brick and mortar until it then turned into online and the right people showing up at the right places? Yeah, well, really, I mean, again, we were just looking for a solution for my son. So that was the only issue. We didn't know what it was. And, and one of the stories uh, that I love, obviously, I think are rich is, you know, Napoleon's son, who was born without any ears. And but Napoleon always said he will hear, he will listen, he will hear. 
And people thought Napoleon was absolutely crazy because he was literally born without ears. And so, you know, but Napoleon never gave up. He, he For 20 years, he said, my son will hear, my son will hear. And then obviously, you know, for those of you that have read the book know that, you know, there was an experimental uh, procedure that was taken and he could hear at 20 years old. And let me tell you, you break out the Kleenex for me because I had read that. I had really internalized that story after what I had done with my son. And again, I'm an optimistic person, you know, whether I was born that way or nature versus nurture. I knew that there's only one dad, you know, you know, each of us only get one dad or one mom. And he was a healthy kid. And I knew it was my job, my, my role, my responsibility to get him healthy again. And so we scoured the, the internet to find out how we could reverse, you know, a severe autism diagnosis. And we, we made some progress with food and diet, but there were plenty of dark times and we didn't know what to do. And we tried everything we could. And, but I wasn't going to give up, you know, and maybe you have those really tough days. And then for me, it's like, just go to bed, go to bed you know, know in the back of your mind what it is that you want to solve and then wake up and you have a new day and, and, and go after it and get it done. So that's what I did. And then like I had a chance meeting with a friend of mine who was a, a cannabis farmer and we were just grabbing breakfast. And he said that he had a doctor friend who was asking him to grow some hemp for a CBD pen. And I was like, I don't know what, what are you talking about? What's a CBD pen? Is it like a astronaut pen for Seinfeld that writes upside down? He goes, no, it's a yeah, pen is like a you roll it on your skin where there's pain, like on your knee or back. And I go, well, that's cool. I go, but why is he asking you about it? And he goes, well, I'm a cannabis farmer, and there's a strain of cannabis called hemp that it has makes this product, makes this uh, chemical called CBD. And so, like all of us, what do you do? You go to Google and you type it in. And I'm on the mission to find how can I solve my son's uh, issue. And I type it in, and on like the third page down. It said that CBD was helping children with epilepsy and seizures. And so I was like, what? And so I was like, and I knew it was neurological, epilepsy, seizures, autism. It's a, like an autoimmune disease of the brain of inflammation and, and not able to detoxify and you know function correctly. And so I was like, I called my wife. I said, can you believe it? There's a plant. It's cannabis. It's hemp. And it's helping kids with seizures. Maybe this is what we've been praying for. And so we became experts and we traveled the world and interviewed doctors and went to conferences and, and I went all in and we tried all these products on the shelves and nothing seemed to work, but I wasn't going to give up because it made too much sense. But as I learned more about it, it was the way that people were processing CBD. Look, it's a plant. It's meant to be eaten. Our bodies know how to consume plants. It's not meant to be heated. Heating is a completely different animal, and that's if you're going to go down the, you know, psychotropic or psychoactive with what's called marijuana in our country with THC. Hemp is stuff you make rope and clothes out of, it's, and it's got this chemical called cannabidiol or CBD. Anyways, I was just like, wait a second. I came across some research. Dr. William Courtney was using it to juice it, juice hemp, and give it to people with late-stage cancer with tremendous results. So I took what I knew from the CBD and the epilepsy seizures, helping children, juicing the plant for cancer. I combined it. I grew some here myself because I couldn't find anything on the marketplace that worked and then gave it to my son after he was at a pumpkin patch, having a tantrum, hands over his ears, kicking, screaming under a bench. And I gave a, a tincture to my wife that we had just made that morning and gave it to him. And literally 30 seconds later, he snaps out of it, pops up, runs off to go play with his sister and pick a pumpkin. And grandparents, aunts and uncles are there and they're like, what was that? What'd you give him? And it was like, that was the beginning of our raw hemp miracle. And that was it. And he's no longer on the spectrum, uh, no longer carries the diagnosis. And so with that, that was it. But we told that story enough that people, they wanted it. And so they found out they would seek us out and they would find us for like fibromyalgia, neuropathy, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, Parkinson's. And so we were just giving it away in the beginning because we were making it. And we eventually so many people kept coming we had to like start charging for it because we couldn't just make it all day and not make any money. Right. We have to be stewards. <laughs> of our and so anyways, and that's when we started, we were .org as 101 hemporg And then one thing led to another and they passed a farm bill in 2018 and then the whole world wanted CBD. And so then everything was great. And for those two years, I mean, we were a skyrocket and we were, nothing could stop us. And then COVID shut it all down. And that's when I had to transition over to, and I, I immediately knew, fortunately, I knew that Russell was the guy. And so I immediately knew. And for those of you that don't know Russell. Please, he's, please yeah. share yeah. 
because I think it's important to transition yeah. into that and understand yeah. everyone's journeys, because I know you're explaining secrets of success, which we'll go deeper into, but for anyone that's here, I mean, think about your own trials and tribulations, you know, in your own life. I mean, Justin's case, the fact of how your path has led all of this is just fascinating. But anyway, let's, yes, continue. You knew about Russell because you were in those circles yep. and tell us about Russell and who he is and how you ended up manifesting partnership with him. Well, again, like I said, right when COVID hit, this world opened up, the world that we're doing right now, you're watching this on YouTube or listening to a podcast. It really wasn't, it, it, I didn't know it existed. Like I thought Facebook and Instagram and, and social media was really, I don't know. It was kind of like people you knew in high school and there was like people showing pictures of their food. And I was like, it didn't make any sense to me. I'm an entrepreneurial, serial entrepreneur. I didn't, I was like, I don't have time for it. But when, when COVID happened and all the lockdowns came, like everyone started showing up and they started going live. And then like, so all of a sudden I'm having access to people that I had never had access to before. And that's when I started joining these masterminds, which, you know, most of you know, kind of started with Napoleon Hill. Right. And so you start joining these masterminds. And the only reason I was joining masterminds was I had to solve the issue was I couldn't open 25 new brick and mortar stores. That wasn't going to work. I had to figure out how was I going to sell online? And then the consensus I kept getting from the masterminds that I joined earlier on was Russell Brunson is the best. And so but the problem was Russell Brunson's mastermind wasn't open. It was closed and it wasn't cheap. It's 50,000 a year. Anyways, so I was in other masterminds until I got a whisper that Russell's might open. And so I went to a huge event. It's called Funnel Hacking Live every year. Over five, 6,000 entrepreneurs show up in person like jumping up and down, having a blast. And I go to my first one. And at that Funnel Hacking Live, he opened up the mastermind. And so I joined the mastermind. And that's when I got access to all the secrets I needed so I could say, okay, finally, this is what I need to do to get the traffic to my website, to reach a billion people, to serve, to help people who have using all these prescription pills or you know have no hope or don't even understand. And it's not just the product itself. I mean, the product is amazing. But it's the mindset of taking control of your health, just like taking control of your hindsight. So many people, they give their control over to somebody else who studied at a school and they, you'll get in a bumper, you know, fender bender and you'll go get three estimates for your car, for your insurance, but you're sick or your health is bad and you go to one doctor and whatever they say is true and you start taking medicine and, and they're not even asking you about your lifestyle, your food or your diet or your family history. And so anyways... I was just like, okay, so I need to figure out how I can reach the masses. And so that's was Russell. And like I said, when I got in there, you get so blown away. But he taught me so much. I mean, so much. Like if you're an entrepreneur and you want to understand how to scale your business and have step-by-step -step frameworks, paint by numbers, truly a third grader can do. Russell's had multiple teenagers make a million dollars by following these frameworks. And it's so simple, but so powerful. Things like the value ladder, where you talk about a low ticket offer and then you keep over delivering and, and they keep going up and you keep making more offers. And he has templates and he has a company called ClickFunnels, which is the software that you use. And anyways, I was so impressed that I put him on the top of my list, which is called a Dream 100 list. And a Dream 100 list in the old days, because I'm old, is was called Chet Holmes and the Ultimate Sales Machine. The Dream 100 list is your top 100 dream clients. And I had done that. And it's an amazing story about that. Well, when Russell retaught Dream 100 to me in his book, Traffic Secrets, which came out in March of 2020, you know, talk about being in the stars. He says that there's 100 Dream 100 influencers out there that already have collected your audience. Now, I had always been in business to business sales, meaning I was a business. I was selling other businesses. Now, when you switch over and you're going to be selling a business to consumer product like ours is, now there are people like Tony Robbins and Oprah Winfrey and Martha Stewart that have collected millions and millions of followers that would love to hear about a product that's natural and homeopathic, has no side effects, that helps with pain, stress, and sleep. So when Russell taught me that, because I had never heard that before, I was like, okay, well, first thing I have to do is make a Dream 100 list. Who do I put at the top? Russell Brunson. Why? 
because I want to pay him back. So I start sending him gifts and showing up at things and doing going out of my way, you know, finding ways that I could serve him. You want to know the most underrated and the most important asset or, or characteristic, I believe, in to being a successful business person? Anticipation. So then we've all heard the thing where Rain Gretzky says, don't skate to where the putt is, skate to where the puck is going to be in hockey. And so if you can anticipate a market, if you can anticipate trends, and if you can anticipate someone else's needs before they even know they need it, that's when, and you can do that in life, personal relationships too. So I would send like these cool things to Russell and again, all I did was in one of his newsletters, he had something with Napoleon Hill talking about there's no such thing as education. There's only self-education. And I had put that in the group. And I said, check out this amazing article from Napoleon Hill. Oh, by the way, there's that Napoleon Hill auction coming up next week. Let me know if anybody wants the deets. And that's how it all started. That was like 18 months ago. And just like that, I was serving. Yeah, that's what I'm getting from you, Justin, as I'm getting to know you better. First, you have that spirit of serving, of giving back. and But you also have that vision. You're able to tap into seeing more further along than other people might be able to see. And I think that's a big quality that's described in the book. You know, Napoleon Hill talks about our higher faculties and not paying attention to our senses and to our physical senses of taste, smell, touch, sight, hearing. But you're seeing further than that. Like you're connecting to something deeper, you know, like intuition, like what you did with your son when you're like, I'm giving the hemp, you know, like I've heard here, I've done the research there. He's having a tantrum, a meltdown. How many of us parents and my daughter, you know, has things with sensory processing. So she's had these tantrums and you're just like so frustrated because you don't know what to do for, for them, but you connected with something intuitively that was, that was, higher than yourself to be able to solve those problems. And I think that what I'm sensing, that's part of your secrets of success besides being at the right place at the right time. You know, I, I love this, but I, I want to, oh my God, I have so many questions with you. Let's go back to masterminds because masterminds, you said you were a part of some masterminds, but you wanted to join Russell's mastermind. And I feel like the term mastermind has been thrown very loosely. It's become very cliche in these last couple of years. But the person that coined that term is really Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich. So what have these masterminds done for you? Because I know some people might be listening that might be poo-pooing masterminds or might not even know what a mastermind is. So I'd love for you, now that you know from Think and Grow Rich that you've been part of you know, elite masterminds and have paid a good chunk of money, what are you paying for? And why should someone join a mastermind and be open to the term of mastermind and be part of a mastermind? Well, it's a great question. And, you know, masterminds really is one plus one equals 11, right? So two minds, at least two minds get together and it creates a bigger, more expansive synergistic mind. And so I didn't know what masterminds were before COVID, really. I mean, I had read about them, but it didn't really make sense to me. And yes, they, you know, they, they would travel around Henry Ford and Firestone and Napoleon Hill and, and those kinds of things and, and Edison. It, it really didn't make much sense to me. And again, that was this whole new world that opened up. Now, they, I'm sure they existed back then, but they got really, really popular. And so what happens? So a lot of people started selling masterminds. Well, some people didn't. And what is a mastermind? A mastermind is a collection of like-minded individuals with, you know, you're basically there for a common purpose, you know, and whether that's business or spirituality or whatever that common purpose is, most of them have been for entrepreneurialism. And so I joined one, the first one that I had even heard about, and it was good. And it introduced me to what a mastermind was and what it could be. And it was had to do with digital marketing and sales. But at that time, I didn't need a lot of help with sales because I had been in sales for 25 years. But the digital marketing was very interesting. And again, but that was me getting into that mastermind kind of showed me what it could be. And then when with that mastermind concluded was at the same time that Russell's opened up. And that's when you get into a mastermind of people that have common purpose. And, and it really the mastermind comes down to the leader. So like if you have a leader who you identify with, who has common values, who has accomplished the thing that you want to accomplish, they're going to attract more like-minded, like-valued people. And that's what was so great about Russell was when I got in the inner circle, there was a hundred of us in there. 
And I got to meet so many different versions of me in so many different industries with so many different perspectives. And you had to make at least a million dollars to get in there. And it was 50,000 to get in. And you had to like, it's like joining a country club, right? And there's an old joke from Woody Allen. I'd never join a country club that would let me in. But but it's like joining a country club. But instead of playing golf, you're playing life. And if you're hanging around people that are like-minded, like value, positive, optimistic, accomplished, looking for more, looking for growth, looking for things that are givers, that are not takers, that are not looking for what's in it for me, because the leader has shown you how he's done it or she's done it. And you're like, well, that's what I'm all about. I identify with that person. And the, the attraction comes in. And so in that mastermind, you have one person that charges. And look, there's the old cliche, those who pay, pay attention. It's true because a lot of people will be like, well, I don't need to pay $50,000. We'll just do a mastermind for free. And then what happens? You meet for like two or three times and you never you never pick up the phone or you never show up at the at the meeting. So when you put the money in, it's not just like, you know, wow, what a, why are you spending that kind of money? It's like, you pay attention. You don't miss meetings. You fly wherever the next thing is going to be and you're all in. And that's part of what it's all about. So a mastermind is I'm forever in debt to it. It, it changed my life forever. And now I have business partners, not just Russell, but others. I have friends for life. You know, I call it chosen family. You might not find the right mastermind right out of the gate and you might, you know, it took me two, but I pray that maybe you find it in one or maybe you find it in three, or maybe you have a mastermind that serves you for that period of time in your life that it needed to, and then you'll find another one. So there's my take on masterminds. I love it. I appreciate the clarification because I'm a big believer like yourself, you know, of just joining. And when you're invested, you will pay attention. Like you're saying, you know, you really, and it creates, like you're saying, I've created lifelong friendships, partnerships. We've given business to each other. I mean, it, it, the list goes on. I can't emphasize how important. I mean, just think about it. One mind, you trying to figure everything out on your own or a collective of minds that's tapping into something bigger. I mean, it's just common sense. But we're going to take another moment to pause because I want to come back to schools and teaching this material with kids since you have four kids. And how do we bring this to the next generation? How many times have you looked around at the people you love and realized I'm different? You think differently. You feel like your view of the world is different from the rest. You have a constant and consistent appetite for more. You want more success, more fulfillment, more energy, more mental strength, more deep relationships, more happiness. If you feel a longing for any of these things, then I'd love to have you to be part of the Secrets of Success Mastermind community. And don't feel like you have to commit to anything right now. I'm not asking for any type of contracts or anything like that. All you have to do is say, maybe, and test drive the Secrets for Success for free for 30 days and see for yourself. Just click on the link on the show notes because when you do this, your life might take a big turning point. So let's go back to children. You have four kids. Your son is the oldest one? Is, is he the one that, second, okay, that all of this mission started for you. And that's a great gift that your son gave you that you have no idea about. And so how do we repay back to our future generation, Justin, our kids? How do we teach them? I mean, I know how I'm bringing some of this material to my daughter, but I'm curious how you're bringing it home. You were lucky enough that you learned about this in your 20s. I wish I would have learned this in my 20s. I had it. I don't have the luck to have had it at that moment, but every, we all have our own paths. But for our children, what do we do? Because this is not being taught at schools. And this is what should be being taught at schools. What's your take on it? And how can we all contribute to a better future? Well, I think that, you know, as a parent, you know, like kids may or may not listen to what you say, but they always watch what you do. And I was at that Funnel Hacking Live with Ed Milet. He was one of the keynote speakers. And he said something that brought the house down and the tears came out. But he said, there's a form of child abuse that goes untalked about in our country. And that is, if you don't chase your dreams, how will your kids ever know that they can chase theirs? And so it's a matter of, if you're not chasing your dreams, if you're not showing them that you can go for it, then how can they firmly believe in their hearts that that's something that they can do? that they can be able to do. And so for me, it resonates. I mean, I'm a dreamer. I'm a John Lennon guy, but I'm also action. And so, you know, when you accomplish your dreams, when you set a goal and you show your kids that you can do it, 
and you show them what it took. You show them the hard work. It wasn't just handed to you. It wasn't like overnight success. I think that's the greatest thing that we can do for our children. Because again, I mean, I'll tell my kids about these principles. I'll take them to, you know, events. There's one called Unlock the Secrets, which is an entrepreneurial kid event, which is great. And, you know, maybe a couple of things will hit or miss, but it is spoken from a lot of, you know, teenagers, which is great. So they can see their peers having success. And so again, for me, it's about teaching uh, our children through action, you know, and I mean, some of that's going to stick when you talk about Think and Grow Rich or principles. It's, it's some of that will stick. There's no doubt about it. But when you live your best life, when you have a goal and you go after it with all your might and they'll see you fail and get up and they'll see that perseverance that it takes, they will never forget that. They will always, you know, watch what we do, but they will always remember. Watch what they may or may, like I said, may or may not apply what we say, but they will always watch what we do. They will always watch our feet. So I just think it's most important to do the thing. If you have a dream, go for it. And even if you don't reach your dream all the way, they'll see that you went for your dream. And that's what we all can do. And so many of us, we have plans and prayers and we want things to happen a certain way. But like you said, we look back and we say, well, what I was planning or dreaming was like this. And now what I have is so much more than I ever could have possibly imagined. Just like when I was trying to solve a problem for my business, you know, to reach a billion people. Now I'm a partner with Russell Brunson and reaching millions and millions of more people with their mindset and helping them with their mindset. But also, I can't tell you how many people reach out to me all the time about the miracle plan. And so I just send it to them. And so it's like I'm helping both the mind and the soul and the body. And it's great. So for kids, do it. You know, as Napoleon's latest last partner, W. Clement Stone says, you know, just do it. Do it now. Do it now. I love it. And it's so important. I mean, thank you for sharing that story of Ed Milet. I really admire him and I've been following him for a while. So what a great truth. You know, that is just amazing for any of us that are parents is just act, do be the example for them. Thank you for that one, Justin. That is amazing. I was going to ask you, where can people find you? But before I go into that, I mean, we can come around with it because I want you to share with us a little bit deeper what Secrets of Success is all about, how you ended up partnering with Russell and how this dream has kind of shifted because I know your goal is 1 billion by... 2025, but I know you are going to reach and the impact that you're having already is going to be over a billion just because of the teachings and the impact that we're all having. I mean, because if you think about it, here you are on this podcast, then you're on another podcast, then I'm teaching someone else something that I just learned from you. And then it gets posted on social, like it's already reaching over a billion. I don't even know if you're going to be able to, to track that the same as Napoleon Hill has no idea all these people that are being influenced a hundred years later, which is us, you know, bringing this material. So talk to us about secrets of success. Why should we get into it? What is it all about and how can it change our lives? Well, again, like we talked about, Russell went down the rabbit hole of rabbit holes with Napoleon Hill when he bought the one and a half million dollar original copy of those first hundred edition 1925 signed laws of success. And so it started there. And so Russell, when you joined Secrets of Success, so what Russell did after he did that is like, okay, this is cool. I want to know all the contemporaries of Napoleon Hill. I want all their books. And I want all the books of anyone who wrote a book before Napoleon Hill and this new thought movement starting in 1850s. So he went out and bought 15,000 books, every single first edition book that has ever been printed on personal development um, starting in the 1850s all the way up to current day. So he has all of them, every single first edition, many signed. And uh, he spent over $15 million collecting these books. So if you don't have the time or the storage, he had to buy three office buildings to store all these books while we're building a library. And you don't have $15 million, you can go and check out the affiliate link here that I'm sure will be in the show notes and get access to these. And one of the greatest things about Russell is he's maybe he has to be the greatest curator in modern history. And so he combed through 15,000 books for you, struck multi-million dollar partnerships 
with organizations to bring you unpublished manuscripts that you can't buy on Amazon, you can't buy on Audible, you can't buy on eBay, one of ones, and that you'll have access to the true secrets. Like they aren't in books. And he went through and like, I had never heard of Elsie Lincoln Benedict before, but like we have a whole book club on Elsie Lincoln Benedict, how to get anything you want. And so like, there's incredible names of people that have, that were there with Napoleon, before Napoleon, helped Napoleon, Charles Hanel, another one, I had no idea, never heard his name before. Well, there's a letter that we got from Napoleon that he wrote to Charles Hanel saying, thank you so much for your master key system. It was an inspiration to me and giving him, you know, credit for that. So again, if you're into personal development or if you're, you know, called self-help, who cares what it's called? If you want to be able to snap your mind into a great headspace, you, something that bad happens, 90 seconds, that's the chemicals that are released. Anything after 90 seconds is your own conditioning, your own brain wiring. You can snap out of whatever bad mood that you're in, in 90 seconds. There are ways to do that. And these are the kinds of things that we teach to understand how your mind works, the conscious versus the subconscious, to give you frameworks, simple frameworks that actually work. There's community there. We have podcasts that are in there that literally you had to pay $250,000 to be in the room. It's just a click of a button and you can listen to a, a, a podcast that that works on these same levels of secrets of success and the mindset. So it's incredible. I mean, we've got Earl Nightingale's Our Changing World, 7,000 unpublished radio uh, performances from him that no one's ever heard of before. That's in there. And it's all free for you to try. Plus, we send three books, including Russell's Think and Grow Rich, his edition with his forward, which is so cool. We got another one. It will place you wherever you wish to be amongst men, which is an amazing manuscript that came from his magazine, the Napoleon Hill magazine. And, and each edition, he would write these really cool articles. And this, we got all 12 of that year, put them into one. You can't find it anywhere else. It was $35 back then if you signed up for it was the original Sports Illustrated. If you signed up, you would get that, you know, and it was valued at $35 back then, which is $2,800. That's we're going to mail it to you for free. You just cover the cost of shipping. And then there, this one, I was at Wise Virginia for the Napoleon Hill Foundation. It's called The Secrets of Master Salesmanship. And it's really about psychology. It's unpublished. No one's read it. Well, six people have read it. I guess now thousands more have because they signed up for the for the free trial, but that's what it's about. It's about community. It's about bringing the greatest minds that have ever thought alive or dead. Most of them are no longer with us, bringing them back to life, publishing their unpublished works, allowing you to truly take control of your mindset so you can start your day right, live your best life, actually get the things that you want, and then you can have that for yourself, be an example for your children, and teach your friends and family. Wow, it's just amazing. I want to go back to one thing for anyone that might be listening that doesn't know what an affiliate link is, Justin, you know, because they can become part of this, like not just part of Secrets of Success Club, but if this is something that they have a big community and they want to grow their community, they could be making money off of that, right? Can you explain a little bit for anyone that's like, what is she talking about of like being part of the club and making money on the side? How does affiliate marketing or having an affiliate link work? It's really, really simple. So basically there's a link that you can either sign up to be an affiliate, which is totally free. And then if anyone signs up for Secrets of Success, you get 40% commission for life anytime anyone signs up. And so the first month is free. You get the three books, the millions of dollars worth of books mailed to you for free. And then after you check out all the other cool books and everything else that's in the membership site and in the community, yeah, if you want to be a part of it forever, it's just 97 bucks a month. You can cancel anytime. So you get 40% of that. So if you sign up three people, then you don't have to pay for it anymore. And there's people, and we're sending out uh, commission checks, affiliate commission checks for five digits and higher. And we're only, you know, 60 days old right now. And for some people, it's a side hustle. For some people, it's a part-time job. For some people, it's a full-time job because, you know, we're talking about an opportunity to make uh, a lot of money. And it's not just about making money, though. It's cool. But it's incredible impact. And so, I mean, the money's cool, but really being able to introduce people to books and thoughts that they can change their lives forever. That's my favorite thing. But you get the best of both. You're going to change people's lives who sign up and you're also going to get, you know, affiliate commission checks 
showing up in your bank account. I love it. One last thing before we wrap up, it's just, it's coming to me, Justin, and I can't bypass it while I have you here. I was just on a podcast this past week, which was interesting because they caught me off guard being a Napoleon Hill coach and that I'm doing this series. I'm thinking we're rich. Like this particular person has been following me for a while. And she asked me, which I never even occurred to me. She's like, well, there's a lot of people that don't agree, you know, with Napoleon Hill principles, you know, it was a a man's book written for men, you know, like a hundred years ago, it's not very woman inclusive, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it's supporting the big corporations and stuff. So it was an interesting conversation for me because I was able to turn it around that I look at these things from a woman's perspective, and this podcast is geared more towards women. It's not exclusive. I know there's a lot of men listening to this one too, but I was able to bring the perspective of you have to read things and study things within context of the time period and take what works for you and leave what doesn't, you know, like that's my perspective. But I'm passing the word on to you. You know, you are a man, you're working with Russell. Secrets of Success is based off of a lot of these books from a hundred years ago, which are very men driven because those were the times. I know there's a couple books of women of that time that were very smart, enlightened, knowledgeable. What's your take for anyone that might be listening? Like, oh, this is just male driven. This is not for women. I don't feel identified. What can you say from that perspective? I had to bring it up, Justin, you know, because you are married. I'm guessing you have four kids or if you're, that was an assumption, but you have a mother to your kids. And I'd like to bring a little bit of that male energy into more of that to the feminine side for anyone that might be having like that obstacle. Yeah. Well, again, like you said, the times were the times back then. And, you know, it was what it was as far as who was able to publish. Our first book club was L.C. Lincoln Benedict. And most people didn't know about her. I didn't. And she was right ahead of Napoleon Hill. So she was before she spoke to three million people on stage publicly. And that was the only way that you could get her books which was why it was so hard for us to track down these books. We spent thousands and thousands of dollars to get the how to get anything you want. It's a 14 book club scoured the country, the world took us years to find all those books. And so what was the very first book that we did was Think and Grow Rich. So, but again, so here's the thing, or not Think and Grow Rich, it was How to Get Anything You Want by L.C. Lincoln Benedict. And so again, when we talk about joining a mastermind and people that you follow, like you either there's feminine energy and there's masculine energy. And it, there obviously needs to be some kind of balance or something that you can tolerate, right? A lot of people don't like Tony Robbins. He's very masculine and they rubs him the wrong way. But I always say like, look, like I think of like Martin Luther King. And I think of like, when you talk about basing it on people's merit, not the color of their skin, not whether you're female or male or who cares? Like that's the last, and that's what I love about this new generation. They don't care about that stuff. You know what I mean? And, and they have their things and, and, but it's not who the person was and who are we to judge? It's like, look, does this material apply to you? Does it work? You know what I mean? Like, you know, my mom's a feminist. So I I know I get it. I see it all the time. And I get it because when she came up, it was tough sledding. And Elsie Lincoln Benedict was the woman who got the 19th Amendment passed so women could vote. Those stages that she was speaking at, 38 different stages, 38 different states, she would debate men on stage as to why women have the right to vote. No one knows that. But now you do because of secrets of success and we're going through her book club and having a great granddaughter on and bringing her life, you know, full circle. So everyone can hear about it. So again, I think that's stinking thinking. I, I think if you're, you're having a mental block as to why you're not going to allow information that could change your life, change your loved one's lives, because you think you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So you're only going to listen to people that have the exact same ideals as you. I think that's partially what's wrong with this country. Blue, red, labels, identity. Give me a break. Like when I traveled to other places and I did a semester abroad, when I found another, I was in the Dominican Republic. When I found another American, we hung out like we were best friends because we were in foreign lands. And what did we have in common? We were Americans, right? And this holds true for other countries too. So it's not about finding what's different about each of us. It's finding what's common with each of us. 
Napoleon Hill dedicated his life 20 years without being paid to interview over 500 people and wrote a book about it. He didn't get paid. No monies. He was basically a challenge from Andrew Carnegie. Would, it, would he do it with a referral letter from Andrew Carnegie to go and interview all these people and give you all these secrets? 20 years of dedication put into a book. I mean, I don't care if he's black, purple, male, female, alien. I'm going to read that book because I want to understand what those secrets are. Because, look, I think there's two ways you can learn in this life. You can learn if you fall down, make a mistake and have the guts and chutzpah to pull yourself back up and go for it and look for what you made a mistake on and learn and apply it to the next thing. Or you can learn from other people that made those same mistakes, avoided those potholes and give you those answers to it. I know one way is way faster, way more efficient. And for someone, as you see, like myself, who's all about speed, then, yeah, I like to learn the second way through others. So there's my answer. I love it. Thank you for that answer. And I just love getting that answer from a man, just because sometimes you get the biases with the women and all oh, and this, and I don't like it. But like you said, it's like, who cares what the color, the shape, the gender, the background, the country of origin, it doesn't really matter. I, I so appreciate that, that answer. My last question before we finish up is, I love asking this to all my guest is, what's one tip for our listeners of how to live a life with more courage? Well, again, for me, and again, thanks for having me on the podcast is it's taking action. Like the difference between someone who's, there is no difference between people who are scared and people who take action. So the courageous, so courageous people are scared too. Courageous people have doubts. They have self limiting beliefs, but they take action. So for me, it all comes down to taking action. So if you want to be courageous, do it now, like W. Clement Stone would say. And that's where the secret is. I mean, I know like our friend Don Green at the Point Hill Foundation is writing a book. And it's all about, look, these are incredible principles that we're reading and talking about, but they're not lived until you apply them. So take that first step, find a mentor, find a community. They talk about like buffalo. Buffalo is the only animal that when a storm is hitting, when the blizzard is hitting, it goes directly into the storm because it knows that's the fastest way to get through the storm. So that's how I look at it. You look at Ryan Holiday's new book, Through the Obstacle is the Way. It's like, these are these stoic philosophers that go back 2,000, 3,000 years ago. So take courage. We all have that fear. We all have that fight or flight, but just take action. Take one step at a time, step through it, and you'll realize that you just take another step and then take another step. And before you know it, you're through it. I think there's a country song. If you're going through hell, just keep on going. <laughs> I love it. I never knew about the bison. I'm going to have that image anytime that there's that fear and you know you have to go in. That's a great one. Thank you for that. Justin. This has been fabulous. I so appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your incredible stories and to continue impacting that billion lives or more because I know it's going to be more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. And I look forward to seeing you in the Secrets and Success community. Take care. Take care, everybody. I am so grateful that you joined me today. If you enjoyed it, there's one thing I'd like you to do. Click on the follow button so you don't miss a single episode. Leave me a rating and a review, and please share. As my way to thank you, email us a screen grab of your review at the email in the show notes, and we will send you a free Crafting Your Future guided visualization, which is so simple to do with outstanding results. It will empower you and give you the confidence to attract and create the life you've always desired. See you in our next episode.